Day 44 of learning Valorant, we start off drilling our fundamentals where today we didn't set any flashy high scores, but our consistency is increasing and we tied our all-time high score for average score of 24, which is impressive considering I didn't really even tie my all-time high score for a single run, which means we're getting more and more consistent. I then hopped into deathmatch where we're working on our peaking ability today, removing the W key from my repertoire because I W key too much. It's disgusting. Uh, so basically I binded the scoreboard to the W key and it blocks your vision when you're pressing it. So it forces you not to use it in fights. And if you're about to peak a dangerous angle, you have to figure out how to do so without the W key. Now, is it better than binding knife to W? I'm not sure. I'm going to test out knife with W tomorrow because I realized sometimes I'm just like playing with the scoreboard up blocking my vision because I can still basically see through it. And, you know, the knife is going to force me to not be able to shoot at all. And then when I'm about to peek, I have to go, OK, pull my gun out. Right. So you, it like consciously thinks you to to think about, OK, I have to do this before I peek. What kind of peek do I want to do here? Right. That could be the benefit of using the knife. Or well, with the scoreboard, it's just like I just need a peek. And if I see an enemy on my screen, I'll let go of W. Now, you could maybe if you could have like tons of binds, bind any movement key to scoreboard. So then if you're moving, you can't see. You, it gets rid of shooting air completely. But I think you can only have two binds, so it doesn't really work. Now, when we went into our ranked game on first game is on Breeze, our goal was to just work on our peaking, you know, peak corners well. Don't press W around corners. Okay, maybe even try to slice the pie a little bit, which we did do here some. Now, when I slice the pie, maybe someone can tell me why this looks so janky. Well, one, it's probably because my crosshair placement is just super low. And then I think I'm like jiggling back a little where it should be like move forward, stop, move forward, not like move forward and then walk back a little bit. I'm kind of like mixing a slice the pie and a jiggle peek together into one. So it just looks uncoordinated and like I'm insecure, which is bad because you want to be secure in your decision making ability. Uh, another bad thing I noticed was my crosshair placement where I realized from watching my gameplay, we're including some longer clips today, but what happens is, is I can tell when I'm thinking about something in the game, like purely based on my crosshair placement. So if I'm like thinking, oh, where could the enemy be flanking or where's the bomb planted? If I was the enemy, what would I be doing? Like things like that. My crosshair placement just like drops to the floor and maybe, okay, this is my, you know, theory. My brain's trying to limit visual stimuli so that it can use 100% of its processing power on predicting the enemy's movements. So I look at the floor uh, you know, because the computer goes up in FPS. So that means looking at the floor for my brain should include increase my brain FPS into this play. My KJ's on B site holding it down. I'm like, OK, they just got to hold it down. They got the ult up. I'm going to flank around behind them. But then somehow the KJ dies to a specter headshot jumping over a wall. So I get insecure, run out, make noise. The the cypher hears me instantly kills me very bad play for me because they're obviously over here in this hallway and i just need to play silently flank behind them anticipate that they're going to be holding the angle that's obvious i'm going to come from and then you know murder them their bad crosshair placement this cypher just you know predicted whenever i was in a bad position with bad crosshair placement and killed me there i don't know i was up there i was kind of just egoing it and hoping to find a fight but i was looking the wrong direction I should just not be exposed to a halls or a doors and then hold the middle part if I'm going to stand up there. But I probably should just not ever stand up there. I should just be like pushing elbow uh, because elbow is pretty cool there. I, I don't, that didn't happen. OK, I shouldn't have even included that clip in the video. I don't want to talk about it and we're not going to talk about it. If anyone timestamps this part of the video and puts a comment and goes, oh, uh, your shooting error was really bad. I'm going to ban you. I don't. Can you ban people on YouTube? I think you can delete people's comments, right? That's kind of overpowered. What's the point of a comment section if you can delete people's comments? I have no clue. I guess it's so that you can uh, curate your community because there could be some bad apples. Never mind. Deleting comments is probably a good thing. Here, boom, headshot, a little flank behind. Me and the, the jet went to go look for kills because we're duelists. Even though, you know, theoretically, if we both died, it becomes a 3v2. The game is in a much more precarious situation. Overall, we did kind of stomp this game in a way where I'm like feeling pretty good about myself. 
The only bad part was is those times where I choked easy kills. You know, because when you don't get a kill in the first couple shots, you're just leaving yourself open to take damage. Uh, and then worse is if you die, because it was like free. Like here, boom, Cypher should be dead, and then Gecko should be dead. Well, Gecko is dead. But now I have to go flank around and try to catch the Cypher. He well, uh, smokes here, so he should hear me walk through it, so he knows I'm above him. Maybe I should call my teammate and be like, peek this with me. But I don't really ever communicate all that much, which is probably bad. You know, I'm leaving free RR on the table. I'm not talking with my teammates. Um, and then I just got lucky and killed the Cypher. Here, I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. So I'm like throwing a smoke when they're obviously all dead. After that, we win a duel with the enemy Reyna, and then we get killed. Does someone peek the smoke? I don't remember how I die here. Uh, I guess I go back with my team and then change my mind. Look how indecisive I am. It's pretty bad. I just need to like have a game plan going into the round. Generally on this is split, I just like to play mid most of the time because I find pushing on to B to be a horrible experience. I never like leaving that door. Um, and then playing A is not too bad. I normally go like ramps to heaven and then fight for heaven control unless I have the bomb and then I just go like on the site and plant. But pushing on the site from A also feels bad. Playing mid just feels better because you have options and there's always an enemy there. So you get your guaranteed 1v1. Uh, if you're better at the game, you get your kill. If you're worse at the game, you die. But that doesn't feel too bad either because you can just think about it like, oh, they're just better than me. Unlucky. I got outplayed. You know, that's why I like forcing 1v1 fights because it's either like if you win, you deserve to win the game. If you lose, you deserve to lose. Right now, you could say that about all situations where you die. And I would say that's a very good point. I completely agree. Now, um, this gun skin, you know, since we're going to talk about skins, it, it I like the way it sound it sounded like the, the VFX. Is that VFX? Visual? No, I think that's visual effects, isn't it? What would sound effects be? I feel like you get sound effects with the visual effects, though. I don't actually know how the... the does the sound come with the base gun, or do you have to pay Radiantite for it? I don't know, but this gun sounded cool, but it looks kind of like a beetle. Not that I have anything against beetles. I've just never really been a big fan of beetles. I get blinded by Phoenix, so, you know, it's a 4v3. I'm like, should I stay up here? Is he going to expect me to be here? I don't know. And then I accidentally fall off the wall. That's just bad movement by me, so I try to reposition. Could have got a kill there, but I wasn't fast enough, so I go tuck into this corner because they'd never expect me to be here. No one ever clears this because the cypher smoke, right? I don't. I actually don't know why they didn't check here. I think they shoot through the box here and they would expect to have like done damage to me because they don't think I'm crouched. So I end up two pushing past. I know there's another up there, so I didn't want to kill the Phoenix yet. I tried to get a cool clip and it ended up working out. Luckily, I sprayed transfer headshot the uh, Viper there. So that kind of destroyed the enemy team's mental, right? They're playing their game. They're like, oh, we're going to win this round. Get it close to tied up, right? Two to two. Uh, but I kind of sit in my corner, get a couple kills, feel good about myself. Now, that's something I actively thought about. I was like, okay, I should be patient here instead of just taking the one kill. Um, I'll try to get a couple more. Because I feel like there's like an aspect of patience to the game that I don't have. When I see enemy, I shoot enemy instantly. But I should probably, you know, think about, okay... Right, can they see me? Boom, we dodge a flash. I'm better at the game. People in the comments say, learn how to dodge flashes. I download that. Beep, 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 beep. Boom, instantly I'm kind of better at the game. Every time you guys type something, I do think I get better at the game. Like when people say, oh, uh, stop moving while you're shooting. Your shooting error is horrible. Every time someone comments that, my shooting error gets 1% better. I was going to say, like, I feel like better is probably the best word to use there. Here, a lucky kill, to be honest. If you see my shooting error, I wasn't actually resetting my recoil. Here, I thought my ult, I thought if there's an orb on the ground and you ult, it instantly heals you. But I guess you have to be ulted to kill them for it to heal you. I thought maybe, I, I didn't actually know how that interaction worked. I could have sworn ulting with an orb on the ground starts the healing process instantly. But I guess that would be kind of overpowered. So it's good that I learned these things. When you're playing mid here, at least, I don't know if this is true, but this is how I feel. You should kind of lurk mid until your team pushes on the site. Because then the people in heaven are going to be trying to murder them. So you can sneak up behind them. Now, technically, couldn't you draw aggro for your team? But the problem is, is when you're if you're pushing up to heaven before your team's pushing on to be, they can't really kill the people in heaven while if they go to fight you mid. So you need to think about it in that way where... 
it, one way you get a 2v1, the other way you just get a 1v1 and your teammates kind of get sight for free, but then the enemies still have heaven if you lose your fight. So you need to kind of statistically optimize all of your decisions at every moment. Um, which none of this really matters if you can't hear your sh hit your shots, so uh, don't think about it too much. Now, something I have noticed, which some people might say, oh, your shooting air is getting worse, or your crosshair placement is worse than it was, but we have to, there's like two different forms where you have to judge your skill level off, which is like your active skill level and your passive skill level, right? Your active skill level is like, right now I'm working on my peaking and my movement, and it's still not the best, but it is better than my passive peaking skill level. So I just have to work on my active skill level, get it up a couple levels. That'll also level up my passive level skill level some, and then I have to choose what to learn based on my passive skill levels, not my active skill levels. Boom, look at that, slice the pie. I just sliced it so much. I feel like I'm overusing it and I'm not slicing big enough pies. And then I don't really have a goal for slicing the pie because I don't know what angles to pre-aim. I'm kind of just guessing and then maybe I'll refine it through time. You could say, oh, watch someone else slice the pie and copy it. But there's like a billion angles and I don't have a lot of time. You know, it takes time playing, editing, reviewing, and then to VOD review people, that's a whole nother element on top of it. But if I want to get better, I should do it. Uh, you know, but having excuses is, is, are fun. It's like, oh, I play and review my VODs, but I don't want to watch someone else play the game because I don't have the time for it and I don't want to get better. I just want to keep playing the game every day and never improve and slowly get stuck at the same rank and then uh, blame the developers for a bad game. Look at that. Viper's overpowered. You see that? She shot me and I died. That's messed up. We hop into Aim Trainer today. We got another high score. Um, we're, we're not really getting big high scores these days. I think I'm like getting near the cap of this routine. There's another harder routine, which I might move on to, uh, because I'm in like the top 90% for all of these, um, what are they called? Scenarios. So we'll just have to see what we decide to do, uh, in the future going forward, signing off.